So today we have annual meeting, um, but I just wanted to uh, make a transition to that from our gospel reading. I just love the image of poor Zebedee scratching his head as his two sons jump out of the boat and <laughs> climb up on shore and and walk away with Jesus. Um, you just wonder, what did Jesus say to them? Like, what, what about his presence um, caused such an immediate and... Um, kind of comprehensive action, right, a, a turning. Um, and I just, it, it causes me to wonder, like, have I had a similar experience in my own life? Like, what have my conversion experiences have been like? Um, if it's been a while, like, have I reconnected lately with that sense of call and that sense of invitation that elicits such an immediate and intense response? Um, and for some of us, we haven't really felt that. Um, I wonder when it might come or how we might discover it. But I also think um, it's cause for us to think just kind of what our greater calling is, right? So even beyond sort of a particular invitation to follow Jesus, it's um, what does that look like for us in particular with our gifts, um, what is that calling in each of our lives? Do we have a clear sense of it yet? Um, and again, if it's been a while, like, how do we reconnect with it? Where is that invitation right now, and how are we responding to it? And I think we can also um, ask ourselves that same question as a church. What is that particular calling, that invitation that Jesus issues to St. Luke's, and how have we responded? So we will spend some time reflecting on that today, but I think the mission um, that we felt has resonated with us for the last several years um, to create spaces to form life-changing relationships with Christ and each other across lines of privilege and prejudice that still feels just as fresh, just as necessary. Um, and with God's help, we've had some successes. We continue to be challenged along those lines too, but it feels worthy of our continued work. Um, and uh, we will begin to reflect on that. Um, probably the best way to begin, uh, I think, why don't we just, if Laurel, you're all right with continuing to kind of share our, our report, basically, um, and then we'll go from there. As the annual meeting is called to order. So I want to start my official co-vicar report by just sharing what I think are a few highlights from this crazy last year. From my perspective, I'm grateful to so many people who have helped us transition to worship in this space. Um, so that feels like its own journey in 2020, in this last 12 months, that we've adapted in our worship. We're still not perfect. We're still learning. I know that um, online there are still glitches sometimes, and so we will continue to seek to find a way until this pandemic is over for all of us to be able to gather in some way together on Sundays. We have similarly adapted our Bible study and um, our formation offerings for adults and children. So we have an online children's Sunday school. If you don't yet know about it and would like to be connected, contact me or Jarell. Um, our children's minister. So that's happening every Sunday, and we have sometimes 10, sometimes 20 children on a Zoom call engaging with learning the lessons for the Sunday, singing songs in their living rooms. Um, my own children love that part of it. So that's another thing that I count as a great blessing and success is all the work that our previous children's minister, Don Starry, and our current children's minister have put into getting everyone online. Another celebration in the area of children and youth um, that I want to bring before our attention is the Learning Pod. And there are actually some students here from the Learning Pod today. Um, we are each week, each weekday now, hosting a group of about 16 children and youth in our sanctuary who don't have um, a lot of support at home during the day to do their schoolwork online. So we have um, four competent and capable caring adults with them 
who are able to provide that oversight and support for their learning. And that is worth celebrating in this time, even though we wish it could be bigger and broader. Um, I'm grateful for uh, Jarrell Robinson and also Amani Ago for their work in developing that with me, and especially to Ms. Amani Ago for her oversight and coordination of it as we continue. Um, I also want to celebrate the online youth gathering that's happening. It's been hard to keep uh, a sense of vitality and interest around an online youth gathering as so many people are Zoomed out, tired of being on Zoom. But um, our youth leaders, Gracia Rivas and Yar Kwai, have continued to be faithful leaders in that and seek to connect with our youth each week in that online space. Is there anything I missed in the program area? I don't think so. So Colin mentioned that um, every church always has to answer for itself, just as we have to ask as individuals in a different way. Why did God put this community of people, this group of people, in this place, in this place broadly considered, at this time? Why? What is our collective mission together? What gifts has God collectively given us? What experiences, what passions, what places in society that we might then go forth and bear witness to the good news of God and Christ, as only we as a community can. Each church community has its own vocation, and each community must explore always how we live out that gospel call to reconciliation between humanity and with God. So to that end, we've been thinking and dreaming at the end of this year about the next hundred years of ministry at St. Luke's. And we'll kind of maybe not think about like 150 years down the road, but we're just going to think that we are about to hit a very important milestone. In 2023, it will be 100 years since St. Luke's Church was founded. And it's a, a milestone worth pausing and celebrating and also taking time to reflect even more intentionally maybe on this question. Many of you know that St. Luke's has changed a lot as a congregation since about the 1990s, late 90s, early 2000s, when this community was transformed by an influx, a wonderfully welcome influx of immigrants and refugees. And so now, 20 years down the line, I think it's time for us to consider how we, who we are now at St. Luke's, are called into the next 20 years of ministry. So to that end, we're looking at a particular experience in 2022 that I just want to share a little bit about with you. It sounds like a long time away. I know we can't even think ahead to August of 2021 right now. But this is important because I do want your feedback. I would love to hear from each of you and who are here in person and those of you who are joining us online about what you hear in this that speaks to you, that seems like there's life there, questions you have, concerns you have, other ideas you have. The vision is this. In 2022, there would be a period of intentional renewal. Part of that would include a renewal leave for Colin and I, which is otherwise called a sabbatical, a time of about three months when we'd be away from the congregation, renewing our spirit and our sense of call to this place. And at the same time, the congregation would undergo a period of renewal experiences, a time of reflecting in different ways with different leaders about who we are and where we're called to go in this next season. So first, I want to address three different hot button questions that always come up about renewal leaves, specifically about our leaving for three months in this time. One is, where are we going to get the money? Who is going to pay for us to have another pastor come in while we're gone for three months? And that's a great question. The good news is that because this renewal leave was included in our letter of agreement, we've been saving money as a church each year. And if you're really a attention to detail person, you would have noticed it in our reports in the past um, on our annual budget. We always include a small line item for saving for that period of renewal. So that's the good news. We have money to cover for that um, pastoral staff that will come in while we're away. The second question that often comes up is, what's going to happen while we're gone? And who's going to run things? Or how are things going to continue? 
And the answer there is a little bit more complicated. We're going to have um, a, a substitute priest come in to help lead services, lead worship, celebrate the sacraments, communion, baptisms as needed, funerals as needed. But we would also be relying on a group of about 18 lay leaders, both staff and bishops committee, who would be leading small groups to help people really get to know each other well, better during this time. And I'll get more, I'll get back to them in a minute. But the third question is, are the pastors going to come back? <laughs> are they just going to like leave on sabbatical and never come back? And the answer is yes, yes, we would be coming back. And the intention of this is actually to renew the leadership for a longer period of sustained mutual ministry with a congregation. So we're required in any renewal leave to promise that we'll come back for at least a year. And our hope would, of course, be for much longer than that. So I want to share another small part of this vision before we close this, this section of the, the meeting. And that is this vision around um, the congregation side of renewal, what that would look like, what that might include. And one idea that we have that we have been talking about with the bishops committee, our board, and also a subcommittee of the board is this notion of a delegation pilgrimage trip to East Africa. The idea being that we would send 18 lay leaders alongside Colin and myself to East Africa to visit different church communities, different faith communities, a couple different refugee camps for a few different purposes. One is that we might go and say thank you to the places and people who formed um, the solid foundation of faith that has so richly blessed us here at St. Luke's. To learn from those communities and places, to see how they are embodying Christianity in a way that is obviously so compelling, that plants such deep seeds of faith, that when people come to the U.S., they are joining us here in worship and blessing us with their many gifts and with their presence. So that's one piece of it. We want to go and say thank you and learn from these communities of faith in East Africa. The second point that we would like to um, sort of involve in this journey is that we would be learning for our continued ministry. So one of the ideas is that um, we'd like to visit at least one refugee camp, hopefully two, including uh, the refugee camp in Tanzania where so many of our congregants from the Congo came to us from, including Matrina, who's not here this week, and other families that are beloved in our community. And another refugee camp in the north of Uganda where many of our current Sudanese congregants have family members even to this day. So we'd like to go to these refugee camps. Um, and one of the reasons that we'd like to do that is to inform our ongoing ministry with refugees and immigrants. This was put to us quite brilliantly and I think starkly by Catherine Baum, who is the executive director of Refugee Net. She herself has been a member of St. Luke's since the early 2000s when she came here as a refugee from South Sudan. But she says, I would like to go to these refugee camps because even though I was a refugee, I never lived in a refugee camp. There's many different ways of being a refugee and many different journeys to the US. And she says, I was an urban refugee. I lived in Egypt. I never lived in a camp. And yet people I work with all the time um, came from camps, lived decades in these camps. And I would like to know as a servant leader how I can be more compassionate how I can better extend welcome and support them in their journey when they come to the United States. So that's an example of how we hope this trip, um, this pilgrimage might inform and bless us in the years to come so that we might be a brighter blessing for the world and this community here in San Diego. I invite you to um, provide feedback. Give me um, and our leadership questions you have about this period of renewal, about this trip, and then the leaders coming back and leading small groups to reflect on their learnings and ways that we might move forward at, in the time ahead. Our ears are open in this time. Nothing is set in stone. So please, please, please do speak up. Let us know what you're thinking. If you have ideas, if you have concerns, we would love to hear them as we continue even in these challenging times 
to dream and try to walk forward into following Christ as we discern. That's it. And now I invite with that, I would like to invite our treasurer, Michael Mowen, to come forward to offer our treasurer's report and the budget presentation.